on the other side of the stadium. So you should get there, get rips there, and uh, you can shut, put it on that. Mm -hmm.
Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I have a little secret to tell you. I don't know if you knew this about me, but I'm not a sound engineer. Uh, are any of you sound engineers? Oh, oh, they just raised their hand in the back, but I think they're talking about something else. <laughs> that was really great timing, but they had no idea. Um, so I don't know if you can hear, but I don't think this is coming through at all. And I'm not sure that one is either. I tested both this morning and I got, I got nothing at all. And I'll be honest, I have no idea uh, what to do about that. So if at any point in this service, if you can't hear me, um, just like give, do, do one of these, all right? Um, and I'll, I'll try to make sure that I speak to the back of the room. And then who's our, do we have a reader this morning? Who's our reader this morning? Our lectern reader. It might be Renee. Renee, are you reading this morning? No. What's that? It's Randy. I think it's Don is Randy. Oh, okay. <laughs> True, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, sounds good. You both are, are you okay, you know, speaking without a mic? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, please just give me a wave if you can, if you can't hear us. A couple things for you this morning. Um, we are uh, having a, our final Wednesday night service this week at 6 o'clock, dinner at 5.30. Uh, I think some of the folks from across the street are bringing chili. No idea what kind, so if you're curious, come on by at 5.30. Um, we're also, during Holy Week, the week before Easter, we'll have three services. Uh, we'll have one on Monday, Thursday at uh, 5.30, food, 6 o'clock, worship here. Then on Good Friday, we'll have a service across the street at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 1 o'clock. And then our Easter Vigil Festival will be Saturday evening from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock. That will have some crafts and a fire and some food um, and then Easter egg hunt activities, um, planting Easter egg hunt activities afterward. Um, Wendy, I see a response to that. Do you have, a, do you have something on that? Okay, uh, other announcements this morning. Okay, Linda. Somebody else out there has something to say? Somebody several, several. Oh, yeah, okay. And he'll come up next. Okay, this is about um, if any of you were actually here for the Meatball Supper and the youth were collecting to raise money to buy some gifts for the residents at the Interfaith Care Center. This is one of the things that they're going to be giving to in the gift basket. And this is a vinyl, like um, stained glass effect for their window. And then the, the bag is going to have some other goodies in it. We are going to start putting those gift bags together today after church. So if you're able to stay around for a little while. And then if we have some more to do, we will do them this coming Wednesday after the church service. Those that are with their mentors or mentees um, will work on the bags some more if we need to. So if you can stay for a little while after church during coffee time, we'll see if we can get those gift bags started. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Galen is going to come April 30th back on, so y'all get to meet her, and she's going to speak about Ukraine. On the 30th? On the 30th. Okay. Uh, Sharon. Okay, and then on the 30th, the coffee money will be going to her, and
um, things that people have donated. I, I can thank those in our congregation who have come the diapers and then uh, the onesies. Um, this is part of God's works in our hands. It's a good outreach. Uh, we try to do stuff all year long. So if you're available, it won't take long to get enough people. It's 11 o'clock today in the fellowship hall at some point. Thank you. Let's rise and worship God together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as you hear the word. God, 
It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, through the body is dead because of sin. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies. Through, also through His Spirit that dwells in you. This ends the readings. What 
do you do in that situation? This story, Jesus was friends with these people. Sometimes relative relationships can be kind of fraught, and we can have trouble making contact, making a phone call or paying that person a visit, bringing them flowers or a card. But with friends, people that we choose to be in relationship with, usually those are people that we want to go love, go care for. Jesus, though, hears news that his friend, one whom he loves, is sick and may be about to die. But instead of going to that place, which was really not that far away, it would have been taken him just a few hours to get there, instead, he stays for two more days. He stays for two more days. And I think that this is because death for Lazarus was not the end. Death for Lazarus was in fact necessary because in this world, without an end, there can be no new <coughs> Without winter, there can be no spring. Without night, no morning. And yes, without death, there can be no new life. Jesus said to them, For your sake I am glad that I was not there with Lazarus, so that you may believe. But let us now go to him. Thomas, the disciple who is called the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived at that place, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four whole days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, while Mary stayed at home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming in to the world. When Martha said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The, G, the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and go out. So they followed her, because they thought that she was going to the tomb to grieve and to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the people who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? Then Jesus began to weep. So the people said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he have, who opened the eyes of the blind man 
have kept this man from dying? How many times in the Gospels of Matthew and John this year have we heard a story of the disciples, the people who follow Jesus, just like Crosby and Mason and I discovered yesterday, the people who followed Jesus so often just didn't get it. They would hear something that Jesus said and would maybe take it too literally. Or they would hear something that Jesus was about to do and would completely miss the point entirely. Well, today, in this reading, we get something that is almost miraculous. And that is that there are three disciples who hear something about Jesus, and for once, they get it. They get it. Now, how many of you have ever heard of Doubting Thomas? Anyone ever heard that name? Okay, so Doubting Thomas is this guy, this Thomas the twin. His real name is not Doubting Thomas. He actually had a nickname. His name is Thomas the Twin, and I think it gets really hard uh, rep for being the doubter, the one who just happened to not be there that day so much longer. Uh, today, though, he hears that Jesus is going to a place of real danger. You see, Jesus had been doing things that a lot of people didn't like. And some really powerful people really didn't like. So, these powerful people had been plotting, and the disciples knew this. In fact, he had just come from a place where they had tried to stone him. Which was not just throwing little pebbles. Stoning was a method of execution for someone who needed to be stopped immediately. So, these powerful people had just tried to stone Jesus in Judea, and when Jesus hears that Lazarus is dead, he doesn't just stay. He also says, disciples, let's go to Judea. Let's go to that place where they've got it out for us. And the disciples, after hearing this, they question him, but then Thomas, Thomas, the one that we know as the doubter, he says, let's go with him so that we may die with him. Let's go with him to the end. I must say, this might be the right response. It's probably at the wrong time. We know the disciples later on didn't quite stick with Jesus to the very end. At least these not twelve, these twelve male disciples, they did not stick with him to the very end. But in this one moment, Thomas gets it. And there's a couple others who get it too. Martha, when Jesus arrives, asks Jesus where he was. But then they have this conversation, and Martha says, I believe that Lazarus will rise again on the last day. And this is something that the whole book of John talks about. And those 12 guys who knew Jesus closest, those guys didn't get this point. But Martha says this, and it prompts something from Jesus where he says, I am. Not only that Lazarus will rise again, but also that I am the resurrection and the life. And then, in response, Martha says what is just a beautiful confession of faith. She says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Never let it be said that women can't be preachers. Because in this very moment, Martha proclaims the good news of who Jesus is and what he would do for the world.
Jesus, then again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying up against it. And Jesus said, Take that stone away. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to Jesus, Lord, he has already been dead for four days, and there is already a stench because of the dead body. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that he that if you believed you would see the glory of God? And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of those standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. Then he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of you have ever played that uh, toilet paper money game? Does that sound familiar to anybody? I can remember, like, maybe lock-ins in middle school or something, where there were two teams, and then they had multiple rolls of toilet paper, and it was a competition to see who could wrap up their person the fastest, who could completely cover from head to toe their person in toilet paper. And of course, it always gets really messy, and there's toilet paper anywhere. Um, and then, um, sometimes, they'll kind of spray some water on that person and it gets even messier. Um, I kind of wonder what Lazarus looked like after four days. Four days of experiencing death. And not just the moment of death, but what came after death. And I can't help but think that it would be like if one of those high schoolers that I remember, those middle schoolers wrapped up in toilet paper, had then gone and slept in a cave for four days, not eating and drinking anything, and then kind of rolling around in the dirt, maybe. I kind of wonder if Lazarus didn't look so lively. I wonder if Lazarus looked like maybe even death itself. And when Jesus calls him from the tomb, he comes out. And we do get one detail, and that is he is still wrapped up in strips of cloth. And not only his body, but his head, too. So he's covered from head to foot in these cloths that are death cloths. They're cloths that are used to wrap up dead bodies. And Lazarus, bound up in the clothes of death, wanders his way to the front of the tomb. And Jesus says something crucial. He says, unbind him. Unbind him. And let him go. Lazarus cannot unbind himself. Lazarus has no means or ability to let himself go free. Instead, it is only those who are there with him. Those who care about him. Who can unbind him and let him go free once again. And I believe wholeheartedly that so it is with the church. In truth, we, as much as we might think that we can, we are bound up with so many things. And there is no way for us to unbind ourselves. Instead, it is only those who care about us. It is only each other who can unbind us. It is only by 
caring for each other and releasing each other from sin and from guilt, from hurt and from pain, from trauma and all that binds us. It is only each other, only a community who can let ourselves go. And Lazarus, Lazarus, this man who Jesus waited on, this man who Jesus decided not to go, for another little while, he gets to live on this earth. But there was another thing coming in this story, too. Because just a few chapters later, there would be another person who died. And we're going to celebrate that in less than two weeks. And this man who died was not, he didn't die of natural causes. In fact, the place that he had just gone, where the people tried to stone him right after this happens, those people get together again. And they start to make some more plots and plans, and they, just five verses later, commit Jesus to a death sentence. They don't know how it's going to happen yet, but they decide that this guy is bad news. But, for that man too, death would not be the end. And unlike Lazarus, when this man would rise from the dead, he would not rise wrapped up in the clothes of death. You see, at the end of the Gospel of John, after we read the Easter story, we see the clothes of death for Jesus. And the clothes of death for Jesus are not wrapped around him, clinging to him, messy and full of darkness. Instead, they're laid in the tomb. And the head cloth, instead of being wrapped around Jesus' head, is rolled up in a little ball as if it was never used in the first place. And so we see that death, though it may be necessary, is not the end. But without it, and without the grave, and without the cross, and without Good Friday, there can be no resurrection. Thanks be to God.
seated. I'd like to invite Mason and any other young disciples to join me at the front. Hi, Crosby. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming. So, um, today we read the story of Lazarus. Is that the story you've ever heard before? Kind of? Yeah, yeah. Maybe little bits and pieces of it. Um, I think let's talk about it a little bit. So, in today's story, Jesus had a good friend, Lazarus. They knew each other for a long time, and they knew each other's families, and then one day Lazarus got sick, and Jesus waited for a while, but then eventually he went to go see him, and by the time he got there, he was already dead. Jesus and his friends were very sad, but Jesus knew that for Lazarus, this was not the end. Of his life. So, he, after he was sad for a while, he went to the tomb, to the place where he, he was buried. And in those days, he, have you ever heard, or do you know what kind of tombs they put people in in those days? So today we put coffins or other ways to bury people, usually in the ground. In those days, they would put people, people's bodies in caves. So uh, they would put him in a cave, kind of a small one sometimes, and then put something over it so that people couldn't just come in and go as they wanted. So Jesus goes to the tomb and says to the people who are there, move that stone away. And they're like, Jesus, what do you mean move the stone? Like, it's kind of going to smell because... He didn't just die, and he's not just sick, he's actually dead. It's going to smell, and it's not going to be good. But Jesus says, you know, God can do something bigger here, so go ahead and move that stone. And then they do, and then Jesus prays to God, and asks God, God, I trust in you, but please show these people who you really are. And then he calls out to Lazarus. Did you hear that part in the story? He called out his name. And then said to Lazarus, come out. And then Lazarus did come out. He stood up and all of it, he kind of looked like a mummy. He was wrapped up in clothes and he walked out of the cave. Like he was a new man. And then Jesus says, take those clothes off of him and maybe get him a shower and something to eat. I wonder, what do you think that Lazarus was thinking? What do you think he would have been thinking when he came out of that cave? Surprised? Yeah. Surprised that he was there? Maybe, what else do you think? What do you think he would have been feeling? Happy. I think he would have been happy. I, I would be happy to uh, have a second chance at life. What do you think the other, uh, the other people who were there, people who were watching, what do you think they thought? Surprise, yeah. I wonder if they were maybe a little amazed. Yeah, amazed that someone was alive again. I wonder if it was a little scary. Could have been. I mean, I wonder if they wondered if he was a ghost or a zombie. Uh, but Jesus tells them pretty quickly, it's okay, it's safe. You can go and let him go, and he can live life again. Um, now, we think this story is pretty important because it shows us about who Jesus is, but it's also pretty important because it points to the story of Good Friday, of when Jesus dies. And then also the story of Easter, when Jesus rises again. Let's have a prayer together. And you can all repeat after me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of life. And 
thank you for the gift of friends. Thank you for the gift of friends. Help us to be your disciples. Help us to be your disciples. And follow you. And follow you. Wherever you be. Wherever you be. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like you to rise with me and together we'll confess our faith in the words of the I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
And also with you. We share with one another in peace. Okay.
Do you believe that as you remember your baptism day by day, by confessing your sins in Jesus' name and praying for God's direction in your life, God both forgives your sins and gives you strength through the Holy Spirit to be strengthened in your faith, in your witness to God's love in Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you intend to continue in this faith in which you have been baptized? I do. I do. I do. People of God, remember that you are baptized and loved by God this and every day. Amen. Sorry. 
Please rise as you are able. Serve in love.